according to the Ministry of Public Health in Thailand, um, it was estimated that there were around 300,000 of transgender women living in the country. And of those, um, around 60,000 60, of them, they were sexually active. And of those who were sexually active, around 13,000 of them, they were at risk of HIV acquisition. And the HIV prevalence among transgender women in Thailand in 2018 was around 17%. And in terms of stigma and discrimination in healthcare setting, it was um, revealed by a study um, conducted by the Thai Transgender Alliance and the Transgender Europe that around um, almost 50% of transgender respondents in the survey, they, um, we found that they never received advice and counseling from healthcare providers, especially for um, gender affirming care and hormone use. And almost 50% of them, they also had negative experience from healthcare providers, especially in public health hospital. And from another study, it showed that um, around 15% of the healthcare provider, they thought that HIV positive transgender women should be at shame and blame. So it's um, um, showing um, a kind of multiple marginalized identity related to transgender identity and HIV status in Thailand. And it has come to the Thai Red Cross Aid Research Center in 2015 that what should we do to address um, the unmet health needs among the transgender communities in the country. So um, with the support from USAID and PEPFAR, um, we organized the first national transgender community consultation in 2015. And we invited transgender representatives across the country who represented transgender sex worker, transgender living with HIV, transgender activists, transgender men, and transgender celebrities. They came together and we asked them what kind of services they wanted, what kind of a transgender health clinic they wanted to see in their idea. And we also had um, the healthcare providers representing from the Thai Red Cross Aid Research Center as well. And that's why this is the first important step to engage transgender community meaningfully in the country. And from that consultation in 2015, it has led us to establish a transgender health clinic, which is the first transgender-led um, hormone integrated in the sexual health services. Even the name of the tangerine is also came from the community. It was actually selected, nominated, and was agreed upon by the transgender community at that time. You might be wondering why tangerine, because um, we, we did not know about the word, um, what should be um, nominated, but they came up with several words, several words at that time. So the tangerine was one of the names that they came up, so that's why they like the word. It's not too feminine, it's not too masculine, because we listen to the transgender men community as well, so we agree that, okay, tangerine would, would be the best. So we came up with the slogan, where, trans, where transition fulfills identity. It was also came from the communities, even the locals, and in this picture, you can see that we have, uh, we work very closely with the transgender celebrities in Thailand to promote the health service at the Tangerine Clinic. And, and I would like to acknowledge the, the leadership of the organization, which is um, Professor Prapan Panupak. He is really supportive um, 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 in terms of establishing the transgender community, community health clinic at that time. And, and I would like to show you the structure of the Tangerine Clinic. The Tangerine Clinic actually is integrated under the Thai Red Cross Anonymous Clinic. The Thai Red Cross Anonymous Clinic is the largest HIV testing site in Thailand where we um, normally provide um, more than 40,000 HIV, test, um, HIV testing to more than 40,000 clients in Thailand a year. And Thai Red Cross Anonymous Clinic, Clinic has been administered under the Thai Red Cross Aid Research Center. So here are one of the products that's um, already got, that we got from the consultation from the transgender communities at that time. Here are the list of the comprehensive health services um, for transgender women. You can see on your left hand side, we use the hormone related services as an entry point to de to create the demand for health services among the transgender women communities. You can see that we provide counseling on gender transition to transgender clients as well as their family members. We also prescribe hormone as well as we provide hormone level monitoring in order to make sure that they use appropriate hormone use. And moving to the right hand side, you can see that this is our one of the primary um, objective to provide the sexual health services. It includes HIV testing, syphilis testing, condoms and lubricants. We also um, provide transgender specific health needs such as anal and neovaginal pap smear as well as high resolution 
um, anoscopy and neovaginoscopy. As well as we also provide PrEP and PEP to those who are at risk. And if the, the client who were tested HIV negative positive, we can initiate ART on the same day of the diagnosis if they are eligible. And we also provide STI treatment and vaccination for hepatitis A, B, and H HPV. And at the below column, you can see that the well-being health services, we also are working to improve our quality in terms of mental health services and referrals. If um, um, our, our staff can provide um, the very basic mental health support, but if we can detect any high level of depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation, we can refer our clients to meet with our gen gender sensitive psychiatrists who are working at the Tulalongkorn University Hospital. And it's also the same with the gender affirming surgery. We also refer the clients who are in need of surgery to meet with our um, gender sensitive sur plastic surgeon, which is um, Dr. Poon Pisamai, actually, she's um, already presented this morning to meet with her at the plastic surgeon department um, at the Jula Longkorn University Hospital as well. And apart from that, we still am um, experiencing um, with the, those cases who are the survivors of sexual and gender-based violence. And we um, provide them the basic counseling and we work with the transgender-led human rights-based organization in Thailand to refer those, those cases who are really wanting um, the legal assistance to this organization. And um, the last one is the Botox and skin care, which is the additional services. And um, the reason why we introduced this service because we found that many transgender people, especially trans women in Bangkok, they always um, administer injectable hormone, injectable silicone, and injectable Botox. And that's why this has been introduced as part of the harm reduction strategies to provide that and to um, create the demand for the transgender community to come to use the services at the affordable price. And those um, doctor who um, administer Botox, um, he's sitting here as well, Dr. Pung Sakon. But he doesn't bring any Botox here with the, at the conference. So no need for that. You don't have chance. So here, I think it's very, very um, comprehensive and responsive to the health needs and other unmet needs of the transgender communities in Thailand. And here are the performance to date. In the past three and a half years, we were able to serve um, more than 2,600 transgender clients in the country with the more than 8,000 clinical visits. Of those 2,400, they are transgender women. Of those transgender women, the HIV testing uptake was very high as 93%. With the high HIV positive view, the, high, the HIV positive view was around 12%. In terms of syphilis testing, the syphilis testing uptake was around 60%, and we found um, high HIV, um, high syphilis um, reactive testing result as well, which was around 12%. And for those um, transgender who were tested positive, um, around 93% of them, they initiated ART. And, and of those transgender women, we found that more than 20% of them, they have undergone re sex reassignment surgery, which means that they already have neovagina. And we found that of those who have undergone sex reassignment surgery, 20% of them, they carry oncogenic HPV types in neovagina. And moving to the next column, we're trying to compare those transgender women who receive hormone-related services and those who did not. And we found that those transgender women who receive hormone-related services at the tangerine, they were more likely to come back to the clinic for other health services. They were more likely to have repeat HIV testing. They were more likely to have repeat syphilis testing. And more importantly, they were more likely to have PrEP services at the tangerine when comparing with those who did not receive hormone-related services. So here are the characteristics of the transgender women client at the Tangerine. We found that almost 60% of them, they have, their education level was below bachelor degree. Almost 30% they were unemployed. Almost 20% they engaged in sex work. And almost 60% they used alcohol. And um, more um, um, surprisingly, we found that almost 10% they reported that they used amphetamine type stimulants. And now, in terms of sexual and gender-based violence um, among transgender clients at the Tangerine Clinic, we found that 17% of them, they reported that they were bullied by their classmate, and the average age was around 12 years old. 6% they were physically abused at the average age on, um, of 18 years old. 
5% they were coerced into sex, and the average age was around 17 years old. In addition to that, 38% they said they felt rejected due to their gender identity. And the last one, almost 16%, they experienced public shame due to their gender identity. So um, as Demma said already in the morning, Thailand is not actually a paradise for the LGBT. So I think we're still having stigma and discrimination in the country or even in the community. And it's always happening from school, um, family, as well as other in healthcare setting as well. And, and when we're looking at the data among the transgender men who um, um, share around almost 10% of the transgender client at the Tangerine, we found that um, um, the sexual behaviors among transgender men was very interesting as well because we knew that in, in many countries setting transgender men, they were um, at risk of HIV acquisition. But we're trying to address this gap as well by looking at the sexual behaviors among transgender men clients who came at the Tangerine Clinic. And we found that 92% they reported that they're having sex with cisgender women. And 5% they reported sex with, um, they reported having sex with cisgender men. And almost, and 2% they reported that they're having sex with transgender women. And 1% they have had sex with transgender men. And so far we found um, there's no transgender men at the Tangerine Clinic. They were tested HIV positive. With, um, and the HIV testing uptake among transgender men at the Tangerine was around 95%. So, this is how we reach to the community. We utilize the transgender-led online outreach strategy. So, we do not conduct any traditional outreach, like um, we go out to provide condoms and lubricants in the entertainment venue or, or hotspot, but we don't have staff doing that work. But we only dedicate only one full-time staff who work only through online platform, which is mainly Facebook page, where we develop the Tangerine Facebook page um, um, in, the, in 2017. And and we utilize, um, we use the approach of inviting the transgender celebrity or the transgender social media inf influencer to come to use the services at the Tangerine and conduct Facebook live session together with our healthcare provider at the clinic. And we normally don't talk about HIV alone. We talk about other transgender needs as well, including surgery, plastic surgery, hormone level monitoring, HPV vaccination, as well as in terms of legal and community activities. And it was very successful because we were able to work with the, those transgender celebrity or those who are transgender social media influencer. They came to use the services and they spread their word of mouth among the transgender community, which is the very powerful method to reach out to those transgender community in Thailand. And here are those transgender celebrities that we are working with. They represented diverse background of sex work, transgender youth, transgender student, and transgender um, who engage in the, the beauty pageant. So you can look at this photo, they're beautiful, aren't they? Don't try to find my photo, that's not, not, <laughs> not I stand, I'm standing here in front of you, not on the screen, next. And we found that on the performance, we found that transgender social media influencers is really increasing the HIV testing uptake among transgender communities in Thailand. We found that of those, Transgender who visited the clinic in October to May 2019, we, we, um, there were around 2,000 of them, and of those they reported that they were reached, 70% um, of them, they were reached through Facebook Live. And of those who were reached through Facebook Live, 90% they have HIV testing at the Tangerine Clinic. And of those who had HIV testing, um, almost 30% they were HIV first time tester, which which means that they were never tested in their life before. But once they know about Tangerine Clinic through the Facebook page, they came to have the HIV testing with us. And the HIV testing yield was around 7%, which was very high as well. So here, and I would like to come to the, the, the summary of the success. It's, it's not about the success, actually, it's about the lesson learned where we, where we got when we um, implemented our the Tangerine Clinic, we found that the first important element is that transgender community-led and community-owned response is key to end the epidemic, especially among the, the, the key populations. And we found that integrated gender-affirming and hormone services into the HIV intervention is very successful, successful in increasing HIV and other health-related services. 
and gender sensitive staff and well trained staff are also the key in delivering the health services for transgender community. The Tangerine Clinic, we also employ um, the staff who are 90% they are transgender people and the rest of, of, of them, they are gender sensitive um, staff because before they provide the direct services to the transgender client, it was mandatory by the leadership, Professor Prapan at the Thai Red Cross Aid Research Center that you have to attend the gender sensitization training before you provide the services to transgender. And the training is actually delivered by transgender communities. And we learned that the knowledge sharing and the knowledge um, dissemination is really key when we want to share something to the transgender communities and want to build trust between healthcare providers and the transgender community. So we normally organize um, community um, consultation twice a year in order to exchange the data and the information when we got at the Tangerine Clinic. And we, we um, um, already um, having the greater involvement of the people living with HIV because we're hiring a transgender who are living with HIV to work closely with us and normally provide the care and support to those who were tested HIV positive. And because um, in terms of sustainability, because the Tangerine Clinic services is fee-based service, but it's very affordable. So when you come to, to the service, some of the profit that we make can use to, to, to employ other transgender staff and can use to support other facility, electricity, waters, and bills as well. So in terms of such sustainability, when we don't have the funding to support us anymore, we can use this kind of small benefit to support our operation and implementation in the future. And we don't have only the success, but we also found the challenges as well. We found that um, we have very low PrEP uptake among transgender women. You can see that the low PrEP uptake um, at the Tangerine was around 9% because uh, we found that there were no any specific targeted campaign or key messages that's targeting transgender women in the country. Only um, all those messages who are targeting um, on PrEP are targeting only MSM. So we did not feel related to that message. So I think we're trying to do something to reach to those transgender women who are in need of, of, of taking PrEP. And we found that we are still um, having limited access to the subgroup of transgender population, including young transgender women, transgender women sex workers who are working and get the client through online platform, as well as transgender men who have sex with men, because we are still not reaching to the, to this vulnerable population yet so far. And we still found um, the low HIV testing uptake among male sexual partners of transgender women. This is the, another way that we wanting to know where the women get the disease from. So that's why we try to encourage those male sexual partner of the transgender women to come to use the services at the Tangerine, but it was unsuccessful. So we're trying to find a way that to, to, to increase the number among male sexual partners of those women. And we are working to address the psychosocial support and mental health counseling. So we are, um, um, have been trained by the psychiatrists who are really um, gender sensitive um, in terms of providing care for transgender people as well. And we found that because of hormone related services in Thailand is not covered by the universal health coverage in Thailand. So many transgender women, when they come to use the services, they always prioritize hormone related services over other sexual health services. So this is one of the barriers that be wanting to work with the government closely to advocate for policy change in order to support the hormone related services in the future. So um, this is um, what we, we, we found that um, because of the founding or the foundation of the Tangerine Clinic in the resource limited setting is really important for other people to come to learn with us and replicate our model. So we established the Tangerine Academy for Transgender Health to open the platform to those who are interested in learning from us as well. So we introduced um, the apprenticeship training that allows one to three weeks for those apprenticeship that's provide on the job training, coaching and mentoring. They can come to visit um, at the clinic and learn from our staff from different aspects. They can be community health worker, transgender worker, as well as nurses and physician, and they can learn different aspects of the Tangerine Clinic. 
and the online on-site technical assistant. We also um, conduct international technical assistant, um, which is um, also um, build up the, cap the capacity of the community organization partners um, to provide the, the transgender health services. And this, in this picture, we went to Vietnam to conduct a, a gender, sen um, sen gender sensitization training, transgender health workshop, as well as to help them set up a transgender health services at the clinic, where we're working with the USAID PATH Healthy Market Project in Ho Chi Minh and in Hanoi. So right now, they're having um, open to transgender health clinic in these two cities to serve those un um, underserved transgender population in Vietnam. And yeah, this is the, the upon of the um, completion of the, the, the apprenticeship training that um, we found that is very useful for the transgender communities. And we also developing the, the online platform that um, any other people who are interested in learning from us that they can access to this information and can, can learn from us as well. And, and at the regional level, we also contributed to the Asia Regional Trans Health Conference, which was organized in 2017, and we invited all the transgender representative, healthcare providers, as well as the government policy makers to come to, together to attend the conference and to learn and exchange experiences and knowledge about transgender health in the region. And we're very fortunate to have the Minister of Public Health um, in Thailand as well as the US, US Ambassador to Thailand to come together um, at, this, at this conference as well. And this is the, the previous workshop where we organized the Asia Pacific Regional Trans Competent Care Workshop, which was um, um, taking place um, in January this year, and it w went very um, successful because we were very um, um, having the international guest speaker to come and talk and exchange experience about the transgender health um, services and provision um, in, in Thailand. And I would like to end my slides here. This is one of the, the campaign during the LGBT Prime Month in June. We asked our transgender social media influencer to wear the tangerine t-shirt and to promote about um, the rights to health as well as other human rights of the transgender people. And I would like to acknowledge all the support um, to this organization, USAID, PEFA, Linkages Project, Thai Red Cross Aid Research Center, and FSI 360. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>